Hey guys, I'm back with another YouTube video and today we'll be going over cuticle application as well as how to get a real seamless ombre. So first I'm applying a very small bead of clear acrylic on her natural nail just to prevent any staining, any lifting. Or if the product for whatever reason is just bad, we just gonna prevent all types of lifting. I'll be applying my first bead where the nail tip starts and when you're applying acrylic, you wanna always make sure that you're holding your client's finger downwards. So right now I'm really just letting my acrylic fall as I'm lightly using my brush to bring the rest of the acrylic down. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure that your brush is not too dry. Some people prefer to blend where they place the acrylic upwards, but I just make sure that I get it really flat by wiping it down multiple times. But if it will work for you, blend the acrylic upwards because you do not want any harsh lines as you're starting to apply your nude acrylic. So for this next nail, I will be doing a solid color with my Mia Secret Cover Pink. And for my cuticle application, I will make sure that it is played in real time. So normally I complete one nail at a time, but I was trying to do something a little faster this time and that's why I only placed the white acrylic on the previous nail and I will not be capping this nail until later. So for your cuticle application, of course, you do not want this bead to be too wet. So I did dry it on my paper towel before applying it onto the nail. And you guys can see that her finger is still pointing down and I'm pushing the acrylic up into her cuticle area to prevent it from spilling or touching the skin at all. And of course, after I'll be using the very end of my brush to clean around the sides if needed. This, ooh y'all, that Mia Secret Cover Pink color is so pretty. Like, I definitely recommend that color for your ombre, your French tip. Like, this color is really the only cover color that I use and it look great on her skin. Next, using some wet beads, I'm going to create a marble nail. And as I'm doing this, if I do need to, I'll go back into my monomer and lightly just move the acrylic around if it's not placed where I'd like it to be. And of course, afterwards, I will be applying some gold foil to the bottom and top of the nail.
So how do you guys feel about your freestyles? Like I know for some nail techs it's harder and they feel like they can't put stuff together or they're not creative. And for some others, it's a little easier. And I normally freestyle like all the time. So of course, over time, as you're starting to freestyle more and more, you get better and you get more creative. Also, if you do want to get better at doing freestyles, I recommend following other nail techs. Like really look for inspiration. And if y'all want to, y'all could drop y'all Instagram links down below because it'll be much easier to follow you guys that way than to be putting everybody's name in my search bar. So if you guys want to follow each other, feel free to do that. And I'm going to follow you guys too because like as I said, I'll be looking for inspo and how many followers you have does not matter like at all because your page could be much bigger or much smaller than the next and you could still find inspiration from their page. Okay, so now I will be applying my new for my ombre and for my pinky, I'm going to do it in two beads. So I'm applying my beads slightly above the previous one. And when I'm doing this, I'm not going to automatically start to blend down. I'm going to first make sure that the acrylic is covering each side of the nail before I begin to lightly blend it using the tip of my brush. So now I will be applying my cuticle bead and remember that you want to hold your client's finger downwards and you want to make sure that you remove some of the monomer out of the bead before applying it to the nail. And as before, using the very tip of my brush, I'm going to push the acrylic upwards towards her cuticle area and then blend the acrylic down very lightly. So I'm applying this next bead because I did want the ombre to be just a little further down and when you're applying that first bead of your nude acrylic, the larger the bead, the further the ombre is going to go down. But of course the bead I picked up wasn't too big so the ombre didn't go as far as I wanted it to. So now I'm going to begin to cap these nails and I've been trying to do a one bead method when I cap because of course it's much faster but as of now I just stick to a three or a two bead but if I'm feeling confident on like shorter nails I'll try to do it in one. Also, if you want to practice more on cuticle application, remember to go over your liquid and bead ratio because that plays a major role in your application overall. So this pink armrest I have is amazing. I never realized how low I was doing nails when I was using that black cushion. Like, 
it's extremely low compared to this so i definitely recommend getting one of these because one it's just easier for me to work and i'm not getting any acrylic on my wrist i actually think that i'm starting to be allergic like on my hand to the monomer due to me touching it so much because my hands were so low to the paper towel so with this it definitely had helped me a lot and sometimes i would have to wear gloves due to the fact that like i now have like an irritation on my right hand So when you are in nail school, of course, you do learn about not getting the product on your client's skin or your skin because after a while of consistent contact, you could possibly be allergic to that product. So that's pretty much what happened to me. And when I was reading it back in school, I never really thought like something like that would happen to me. But of course, me not realizing that I was constantly touching my monomer and touching the acrylic on the paper towel because it was so low and my um, arms was just so low to like the liquid. Just make sure that you're being careful with your products and you also don't want to be getting any products on your client's skin because you don't want to cause them any irritations as well. Next for this nail, I actually did the ombre application in one bead. I was just feeling confident. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to try to do this in one bead. And it actually came out really nice. So when I was applying this bead, the first thing I wanted to do was make sure that all of the acrylic was staying on top of the nail. And then I was going to focus on the cuticle area before starting to blend any of my acrylic down. Also, y'all, I have that random stone on my thumb because I was creating some press-ons and one of the diamonds that had glue on it just flew onto my nail and I never popped it off. But if you guys are interested in how to make press-ons, how to package them, I can do a video on that. It was real fun and actually real easy to make. I think it'll be a great extra source of income for you guys. So if you guys are interested in learning how to make the packaging, I'm going to be going over that because I think I soon maybe start my little press on business too like what
So next, using my 5-in-1 nail bed, I'm going to start sealing around my client's cuticles. And this client actually has very flat nail beds. Not that they're thin or anything, but just naturally her nail beds are very flat. So I do have to be cautious as I'm sealing around her cuticles. She also had like experience multiple times like getting cut. So the first time I did her nails, she was a little jumpy. And I had to just like reassure that I'm not going to cut her, which I didn't. But with this nail bed, I can get much closer. And actually, when I pulled it out, she was like, ooh, like, that look new. Yes, it is. And it works amazingly. Like, I'm going to make sure I link it down below. So I actually did record when I was shaping her nails earlier, but when I was re-watching the video, you couldn't see it because of how long my nails were and how my camera was positioned. I know you guys said that you wanted longer videos and you guys don't mind, so I don't mind giving you guys longer videos. But if you are interested in learning how I shape C-curve tips, I will leave a video down below as well. Also, let me know what y'all want to see next down below. I was trying to record me do my stiletto set, but like, mm, it was kind of hard to record them for some reason. So I think the next time I do my nails and I just do them regular coffin, it'll be a little easier. So that's what I'll do next time. But if you guys do want to see like a full stiletto set, we could do that curve. I'm always doing coffin. Like, nobody ever asked me for no stiletto.
so next i will be creating some large 3d flowers and i do have a more detailed tutorial in the description box down below So for my rhinestones, I do use Dulé Nail Bling Glue and the glue works really good. The only problems I really have with the stones is that of course the fake rhinestones sometimes come off the backing. Also, I wanted to thank you guys for 35k on YouTube as well as 50k on Instagram. I didn't hit 50k yet, but I'm about to. And I just really wanted to thank everybody for the support. And I will be doing a sale for my virtual classes all of June. So if you guys are interested, I will have the information posted by the time this video is uploaded.
So now after dusting her nails off, I will be applying my top coat and it is a matte top coat but it goes on shiny and after I cure it for 60 seconds, it will be matte. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'm going to see you guys in the next video.